What do Little House on the Prairie, The Water Babies and Dr Seuss all have in common? Uh, regular viewers can hazard a guess. They're, they've all fallen foul of cancel culture. From now on, classic children's stories, which form part of, the, of Cambridge University's archive, will be given trigger warnings so that unwitting readers don't find themselves scandalised by the contents of such nasty little books or uh, something like that. Andrew Doyle's here to... Uh, to pass my words <laughs> successfully, I hope. Uh, yes. Uh, th th this is so. This is the back catalogue of Cambridge Un University. They, or it, they, they own the copyright. They print the books. It's a particular project which is uh, going on at Homerton College, and they are uploading in digital form a number of their classic uh, texts. And in doing so, this is a that has been part funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Board to the tune of eighty thousand pounds. And they are doing this. They're applying trigger warnings to the text that they perceive. Uh, could cause offence among, among readers. And it's really interesting what they've said. I've got a quotation here. Uh, they say, they aim to make the digital collection less harmful in the context of a canonical literary her heritage that is shaped by and continues a history of oppression. And this is the key thing. They say, it would be a dereliction of our duty as gatekeepers to allow such casual racism to go unchecked. Note that they use the word gatekeepers, whereas, of course, their job is custodians. It's not the same thing at right. all. And they really do see themselves as this very paternalistic role. They're going to protect the public. The truth is, uh, readers can judge for themselves these texts. These Clearly texts, they uh, can't, Andrew. Well, I mean... <laughs> What a, what a depressing mindset to have and what an awful worldview. They've also clearly bought into this, this postmodern idea of uh, the idea that art and literature, that all it is is a manifestation of power. All it is is the dominant oppressive class uh, exercising their power against the, uh, the oppressed. And um, that is such a simplistic view of art, to the extent that I would question whether they, they understand its purpose at all and whether they should be in those roles if they don't. It's a, it's a very bizarre situation. But, you know, and you take some of these texts like The Water Babies, late 19th century, really fascinating, interesting, frankly bizarre uh, book, uh, which is partly a satire on those scientists of the time who were sceptical about the Darwinian theory of natural selection. This is quite complex and interesting. Yeah. Uh, if anyone should be offended by the book, it should be me, because actually the, the minority group that gets the most um, uh, brunt in that book is the Irish. But, but, uh, but I, can, <laughs> I can read that and I can say, yeah, but Charles Kingsley was writing uh, in 18, 1863, this text is, uh, and I understand that times have changed and attitudes have changed, and what I don't need is some librarian to step in and say, you know, you, you better take a, take a moment because you might get upset by this text. I understand the idea of historical context. I understand the idea uh, that art is not necessarily a literal uh, representation of the author's feelings. It's a little bit more complex than that. And uh, I just find it insulting, and I think it's particularly insulting to minority groups, actually, because what, what it is is these people patronising them and saying, we've yeah, got to look I mean, out for we, your we're, interests. We're saying... Uh, I mean, I know this read across with... Uh, Indigenous Americans is, is difficult. We're not in America, right? But yeah. I mean, Little House on the Prairie yeah. seems pretty inoffensive, innocuous stuff. But actually, if you are, uh, a, a, you know, a native Indian, do uh, you care? I mean, you really well, well, I mean, it's possible you do. I mean, we yeah. all get offended by different things. The truth is that any book really has the potential to cause offence because of the uh, myriad associations and connotations that can occur in any literary text. Uh, but we don't slap a trigger warning on absolutely everything on the, on the chance that it might offend. And it's just not the job of these people in these libraries to be doing this. They, they are meant to be preserving the books and, and, and enabling access to them, not making a judgment about what we should and shouldn't be reading. Uh, very odd story. Just got time for Oxfam is saying it will stop stocking a bingo game which features 48 inspirational women because transgender and non-binary staff complained that it didn't respect people of all genders. The women included the likes of Jane Austen, Emmeline Pankhurst, Marie Curie, but also, wait for it, here's the sting, J.K. Rowling, whose assertion of the rights of biological women has irritated increasingly vocal trans uh, lobby. I've not played uh, Wonder Women a bingo game. Haven't you? <laughs> you surprised um, me. <laughs> <laughs> worth, worth a go? Uh, well, you're not I, that we can. You can't get hold of it. You anymore. can't anymore, exactly. Um, no, I haven't played it either, but uh, I, get, I get the gist. Of course, it's J.K. Rowling. It's always J.K. Rowling, isn't it? She's the figure. She's become this sort of demonised, toxic figure from people who haven't engaged with or, or really understood what she's said. Uh, and the, the key thing here, again, is Oxfam have capitulated. The problem isn't the, the one or two people who will have complained and said, we're offended by this item that you're selling. It's the fact that Oxfam immediately said, oh, well, we better take it off sale then, because they're scared and intimidated by these kind of complaints. The, the, the response that you should have is, well, that's your issue, that you're offended by that item. The answer is, don't buy it, and everyone else can make their own choice. Uh